Friends, politics and soccer have many things in common. High stakes soccer has just begun in Qatar. Politics is at its peak in the country, with elections to some of the states being played out. Let's also play this Saturday a game of political soccer. Strategies to remain in power and to extend the reign to much longer periods follow common strategies in both to outsmart the opponents and win matches in the football grounds and states in the electoral. The Indian political landscape has much to learn from classic soccer strategies to outbeat and outsmart the contentious masala that the environment and our society constantly throws up. In today's Saturday Wisdom, I'll play political soccer with you. The game and the analysis I'm sure will be fun. As much as amusing you, it will also add a few strategies to your own repertoire of political wisdom. Current political space is being disrupted like never before. And by thinking, aggressive captains, street smart leaders, carefully selected forwards, fighting fit midfielders, and very talented and committed defenders. A soccer match has never been played as continuously in the opponent's space as is played today in those overcrowded stadiums. Political games are similar between adversaries. The champions team, such as the Bharati Janta Party, seems to be constantly challenging themselves with innovative positioning and collective brilliance, adding more states to the kitty, similar to what we call as superior goal averages in soccer. The opponents, on the contrary, seem sluggish, slow moving, caught off guard and left looking for open spaces to pass the ball. The mavericks among them, though brilliant individually, are left to play solo without a unifying spirit or a unifying leader. The opposition today needs a chuck day moment with a coach like Kabir Khan at the helm who can instill a spirit of oneness, a spirit of individual sacrifice, a spirit of ownership and a spirit of winning at all costs, though the reality seems to be far removed from this. Common soccer strategies so succinctly enumerated by Anthony Graham in his book Soccer Game Strategies can have a huge effect both upon defensive and attacking styles of in a play. A coach generally chooses a strategy with two thoughts in mind the perceived strengths and weaknesses of the opposition and the known strengths of his own players. Whereas the proponents have a full-blown coaching team that uses technology very effectively to build their strategy and make calculated moves to not let go of the ball, constantly furrowing into the opposition space with unifying cliche like all is fair in love and war, the opponents are left high and dry without even a coach and without a mentor who can bind them as a fighting coherent unit so they can put up a decent challenge. To make things worse for themselves, they seem to be without ideas and without you know, the use of effective technology. Long ball strategy. 
is the most basic tactic in soccer. Here, like ball is moved from defense to attack in the most direct manner possible with long lofted passes, often bypassing the midfield altogether and is most effective when a team possesses a tall and physically strong forward or striker. This target man uses the height and strength to gather the long ball or direct the ball to a supporting player. In politics, eradication of corruption is akin to the long ball in soccer. It can be hardly faulted as a strategy. Its internal energy is infinite since it can sustain the entire period of the lawn of the match and play and go beyond the adage all over bar the shouting. The opponent will be in disarray, is caught off guard and will be left counting the chicken for days, months and probably years. Currently is the opposition not in this zone. Another strategy in soccer is possession. Day to day exigencies, playing on the weaknesses of the opponents individually and collectively, keeping them guessing and on tenterhooks all the time is akin to possession strategy that is designed to give the team a greater control of the game. A short passing system is used often combined with a slow tempo to deny the opposition possession of the ball. Possession soccer is a highly technical strategy requiring skillful players and good team awareness on the field. BJP, its leaders and spokespersons carefully chosen for a man-to-man -man defense innovatively tutored on all contemporary issues are making the possession strategy extremely effective. Defending Swachh Bharat or a clean Ganga or the Rafal defense project or even the Article 370. Abrogation requires astuteness and a great political acumen similar to what is needed on the soccer field. The Bohemians in the opposition, stung by the inability to, to get the possession of the ball, leave their flock to mount a counter-attack and in the absence of protection, they lose steam somewhere, harming the cause of the team more than anything else. They don't gain anything themselves, but they certainly cause harm to the team. In the meanwhile, the champions and the protagonists mount a counter-attack that leaves the opposition gasping. Triple talaq that appears to the emotional intelligence of 50% of the Muslim community is a great counter-attack. Counter-attacking soccer can be very effective, particularly for teams with fast attacking players. A counter-attack is launched as soon as an opposing attack is snuffed out. The defending team surging forward in an attempt to catch the opposition off guard. Mounting personal attacks are a harbinger of this truth. Each passing day and probably will continue with the final matches too. Wing play in soccer is another strategy that is sudden attack. Dem demonetization and GST are two very well thought out red herrings played to perfection like the wing play in soccer. The opponents never knew what was coming from the wings. Wing play focuses upon playing the ball wide down both sides of the field 
since a team in possession of quick and talented wingers or wide midfielders may wish to give these players more of the ball in order to maximize their effectiveness. The coach may also spot a weakness in the opposing defense that could be exposed by attacks down the wings, holding together opposing ideologies and parties to win by polls in adverse circumstances is as effective a counter as the wing play. Innovative disruption probably could not have been ever better practiced. According to James Banksbo and Berger Peterson in Offensive Soccer Tactics, the overlap strategy is used mainly in the opposition's half of the pitch and is an effective weapon for creating depth and width in the attacking play. Other players provide an effective cover for the defender when he attacks. Defenders become attackers, attackers become defenders, all in a jiffy. Have you not seen the defenders seamlessly becoming attackers, getting into the opponent's half to take them head on, on their own terms? Practice it if you want to win elections, like the BJP. Be it infra development, be it digital economy, be it Pakistan policy, be it the China policy, or ease of doing business. Every chink in the armor has been exploited by multitasking mavericks in the party. The overlapping that the BJP has perfected has reaped dividends in the form of wins in several state legislatures time and time again. The coaches foray into opponent's turf to poach potential winners is like a war room tactic. It's amazing that the fullbacks have fully backed their strategy of taking the war into the enemy turf. Defense strategy is another very important in soccer. On a very emotive issue of Ram Mande or a price rise that affects the common man, an exemplary defense strategy of shutting down is being played to perfection. It's a high pressure form of defense often applied to all parts of the field. When the opposing team has possession of the ball, the defending players will close them down immediately. This has unsettled the opposition, giving them little time to choose their passes. Roadshows or newly on newly inaugurated expressways is ample proof of this strategy. Opponents, meanwhile, smarting under the power play of the champions, regroup and step up an offside at trap attack, similar to Gujarat or Himachal, hoping for a more opportune time to strike big. The defenders, meanwhile, step up in front of the opposing ward in a bid to try stranding the latter in an offside position. That they succeed with little difficulty speaks of the poor defense of the opposition that failed to advance with the rest of the back line, thus losing a clear goal scoring opportunity. The defenders will probably, in Gujarat and Karnataka, mount an offensive from, the, from their side, their offside, catching the advancing opponents and their forwards unawares and pushing them to their offside. A super goal and another memorable win. Can the opposition pull a leaf from Chakde 
to unite under a dynamic captain wherever he is with collectively running and supporting forwards midfielders half backs so that the country can watch a thriller of a soccer match in this soccer season aka political season of course we will need a political referee for fair play like pelogi kolina an all time great football referee so designated by fifa he will also need to use yellow cards and red cards fearlessly a very important strategy for them however would be to look to the captain and the team itself for answers on how to improve communication between players and their morale after all there is everything to play and nothing to lose friends i have tried to bring a parody of political soccer to you this saturday and have enjoyed narrating a great game i hope you too must have identified with your own ronaldos and messis and enjoyed the connect friends life is for living living seeks fair play and play hard play smart are the buzzwords with that i promise to be back the next saturday with another episode that you may like thank you dhanyawad and namaskar